So in this video, I want to talk about season two of Moonlit Fantasy as it has come to an end. 25 episodes, season two has finally finished, but season three has been announced, so we do have that to look forward to. I expected it would get announced, whether it was on the final episode, which is episode 25. I'm emphasizing on that for a reason. And whether it was the final episode or six months later, it was either or either, but I expected season three would get announced. Still very happy about that nonetheless. I do want to note, because I saw a bunch of people in the last video and in the Crunchyroll comment sections being like, oh, actually, there's two more episodes. It ends on 26. Source? Uh, trust me, bro. Yeah, and look where that got them. They made it up, because they found some random site that made up a bunch of rubbish for clicks, and shocker, 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 it was made up. I've been running a news channel for six years. I know how to fact check things, so don't quote the gospel to me when it comes to fake news. I knew it was fake, but no one could source it. But still, 25 episodes I think was a good round area. It ended on a nice little note. Very excited for season three, but I'm also very excited for the future light novels to come out as well, because there's clearly differences between the light novel and the anime. And so I'm very curious to see what those differences are from season one all the way up to season two. And maybe we'll just see if see, uh, if the light novels can catch up to season two and maybe get ahead into season three material. So it's going to be very interesting on that end nonetheless. So if you do want more Moonlit Fantasy content, I will be covering Moonlit Fantasy throughout the months as more volumes release. So have that to look forward to. One new volume is coming out next month, which is volume two. And then September, volume three. But as far as season two goes, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it from the very start to the very end. I understand some people, and this is the thing, I, I, I saw two different arguments. Those that were annoyed that there was too much yapping, and then there was those complaining that was there was too much fighting. And that's the thing that I just find kind of interesting about the anime community, is there's always this kind of like two sides to the same coin, both sides just complaining, but complaining about the complete opposite side of things, like too much yapping, too much fighting, blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, to me, I'm just like, I think it was balanced perfectly. I loved the fighting scenes because, and even though some of them were complaining that there was too much yapping in the fighting, but you've also got to understand the power balance and the power differences between the characters. And so I think it was done well. But there was also a lot of complaints about the main protagonist and, oh, he made decisions that didn't make sense. It's like, no, they followed his goals pretty clearly. He had a clear objective and he was playing a political game of maneuvering to try and get what he wanted out of different situations. Oh, but, but he wasn't a hero. He didn't save these people. He's not a hero. He never was a hero. Where, who, who gave him the title hero? You? Because, again, I've made, like, how many videos on the definition of a hero, and yet, for some reason, people don't understand what I was trying to say in four to six videos now, is that the definition of a hero is subjective to the individual's view on what you see as a value of a hero. And also, one person could classify someone as a hero, and someone else could classify them as a villain. And that was the whole point that I was trying to get across, which, surprise, surprise, the whole goddamn season proved my point. But people are like, oh, actually, you're wrong. Uh, that's not how a hero works. No, that's exactly how a hero works. You define individually what you see as a hero and others see it differently. It's like the saying, a picture says a thousand words. There are different perspectives of how people see a hero. He is not a hero to many people because no one's given him the title, no one sees him. Or, to be honest, actually, he is a hero to his own people. And that's what I mean. The goddess didn't give him the title hero because she just stripped him, threw him aside. And so the, the human people don't really see him as much of a hero. They see him as more of a merchant, but the people that he lived with do see him as a hero. But then people don't see him as a hero because, oh, well, he didn't do all these heroic things like save all the humans. And see what I mean? We all see him as something different. I don't personally see him as a hero. I see him as an individual that has his own objectives and goals in mind when it comes to political maneuvering. And that's fine. That's what I like about it. That's what I, I enjoyed seeing about Moonlit Fantasy is him trying to push his own objectives and what he wanted to try and get. And he did, at the end of this season, get something back in return. The goddess wasn't too specific on things, so he used that to his advantage. And seeing how that plays out in season three is going to be really cool and interesting. The only downside is people were trying to spoil what's going to happen in the future. So if you do, I will delete your comments unless you put a spoiler warning, so that way people don't get spoiled. 
I'm very excited for season three. I have been since partway through season two because seeing where the story could potentially go and seeing this sort of more civilization building component of if he takes this land, he builds it up, has these two girls help manage it, he can, you know, have his, well, now he's got the four seasons going on with his put place. So it's a great way to just kind of bridge that area and that's what i said and i i guess i got it pretty spot on on what the overall objective was but it, it's not like it was an e it was a hard guess or anything it was pretty straightforward the story clearly outlined what he needed and he overcame those individual problems set out in front of him so i i love the season i f i like the fact that it tries to do a multitude of things and Moonlit Fantasy reminds me a little, of Mish a little bit of Mushoku Tensei in the sense of settings, where it moves from place to place of how the pacing goes. So, so for example, with Mushoku Tensei, you have Rudy at home, sheltered, then he goes with Eris, then he's out in an, the Demon Continent, I think Demon Continent, I can't remember what it's called now. I'm having a brain fart. I'm getting old. Dementia. And then you've got him moving around, then you've got him at the Academy, and then you've got him moving again with the dungeon. It's location, location, location. It's not all fixed in one location. Moonlit Fantasy does the same thing. Even though he has a home base, he's out doing things in different locations, meeting different people, interacting with different settings and groups of individuals. So it's not all just stagnated in the same location. A lot of generic isekais do that, where it's just one fixed location, six girls, nothing really changes other than just that dude building up this sort of Japanese culture setting in this medieval area and it just that's it and it's just a copy paste over and over and over again and the story becomes more about the girls and the romances and the harem and the interactions in the bad place wrong time oh look I'm in a spa oh my juggalogs like I don't mind those but I don't need them in like eight out of 12 episodes like one out of the 12 episodes that's fine maybe even two out of 12 episodes but when it becomes excessive and it becomes the main component of a story that's where i start to get a little bit bored unless i know that's what the entire point of the anime is and it's self-aware of that you look at something like high school dxd and i know that's not an isekai but i'm just using it as an example of fan service then i'm fine with that and even that's got story and plot development and character development and different locations so even that knows how to balance it but there are a lot of isekais that just stick in one location and focus too much on one thing moonlit fantasy moves around and tries to do different things which is what i like and all the political maneuvering is fun it's interesting it allows you to learn more about the world run that just been fixed in one location so i personally really enjoyed season two the thing is i sit there and ask myself what could i criticize about season two what because i like to balance my reviews i like to look at the positives and the negatives i know that upsets people but i try to always balance it and as far as criticisms go i can't really say anything until i read the light novels and know what's missing so, for example, season one, I could criticize it a little bit now because I've read the first volume, and one of the things that I kind of wish was in it was a little bit more of the dragon chick. I'm having a brain fart. Toma, there you go. It's coming back. My dementia. Her personality is a lot more extreme in the light novels. I would like that to be the case in the anime because it's more comedic. It's more funny. Just see how in batshit insane she is when it comes to her obsession with Japanese culture that's what i kind of want to see but again that's as far as criticisms go it's very 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 minor as the volumes come out i will probably have more interesting analysis to make in comparison of the anime and the light novel so i'm very much looking forward to that and that is why i'm really glad the light novels did get translated i just wish they were translated a little bit earlier because then it could have given us a couple of volumes while season two was airing so at least then we had some more meat to dig into so I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As far as season three goes, I'm, I've spoken about my speculation on when it will come out on the news channel. But as far as other things go, I, I expect this to be a single core season, maybe. That was what I was thinking. Um, yeah, I don't expect this to be a double core just because of the amount of material that's left. Unless they start pumping out new light novel volumes, maybe. But my concern is, is if they do a double core for season three, it might start getting through the material too quickly. We'll just have to wait and see. I do think season two made sense being double core because of the story that was being covered. While season three, 
I've been told from fans that it's a lot more crazier stuff going on, so it might make more sense to make it a single core. We'll just have to wait and see, but super excited, very happy. I, again, as I said, it was either going to be announced at the last episode or announced in six months' time. Either one, I'm happy. Sooner, the better, but I hope they don't rush it as far as animation and quality goes. So, again, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.